Okay, so this session, Empower Your Career Conference, April 5th, getting started with Power BI. My name is Mihir Shah. I'm a solution architect. Uh, my Twitter handle is at MihirCRM, and my blog is 365withoutcode.blogspot.com. Uh, something personal about me, I love visiting national parks with my family. I've done a lot of camping and RV trips. So you see one of the pictures there is uh, a national park. It's the Twin Peaks National Park. It's uh, in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. So if anybody visits there, this is the national park in which the airport is. So that was a fun fact. The agenda for today, I'm going to talk about Power BI, give you a basic introduction to what Power BI is, uh, connecting to data, how you connect uh, Power BI to multiple sources of data. There are connectors for online data apps, also for Excel and any other source where you have uh, on-premise or on online or anywhere else. Uh, we'll also talk about transforming and modeling the data. So how you transform the data and how you create models out of it using Power BI Desktop. So my focus is going to be on Power BI Desktop, which is a free application that you can use, and it will basically help you in creating the reports and visualizations that you want to do. So we'll do the creating of visuals using Power BI Desktop and publishing and sharing of your desktop reports and visuals to Power BI service. And finally, which I think is the most important part, is how do you get insights and the latest features in Power BI with AI, uh, how you can use Power BI along with artificial intelligence. Uh, Microsoft has provided some new features, I'll, and it's in the premium edition of Power BI. Power BI premium license is required, but we'll talk about it more. So I call this the Power BI as the UI for BI and AI. So we can use for business intelligence and artificial intelligence, and it's a UI for that. So why do we use Power BI? It is to create, uh, collaborate, and present visuals, business insights from data. It has connectors, multiple uh, 200, 300 connectors to connect with different data, and it's AI powered data modeling that's enabled with Power BI. It's an Azure service. The data is stored in Azure Blob, and if you have the premium edition, it can also store it in Azure Data Lake, Lake Gen 2. It's a collection of apps that you can have online, which are data sets reports, dashboards, and generate insights from it. So that's what Power BI is all about. So how do we get this? So there are multiple components within Power BI. There's a Power BI.com service, which is an online component, which is where you will share and you will publish your data to. There's a Power BI desktop that you will use to Transform your data and model your data. Power BI mobile app is also available that allows users to consume the reports and visualizations that you generate. And for on-premise, there's a Power BI report server. So you get all this along with your Power BI licensing. So this is just a visual for the Power BI components. So you have your dash desktop app, We'll install the desktop. You can sign into the Power BI service online. You will get the data into from different sources, connect to your data. You can then explore the UI, transform and model the data, and then share it using the Power BI service on mobile apps and embed it into multiple platforms. So let's briefly talk about licensing. So there are three different licenses of Power BI. It's important to know uh, the differences between them when you are working on Power BI. The free license that Microsoft provides, it allows you to create the visuals just like Pro and the premium license. 
So the only thing is with free license, you cannot share your visuals. So anything that you create with your visuals cannot be shared using your free license. If you want to share it with someone, you have to use a pro or a premium license. Also, if you want to view any shared visuals, you cannot view it with free license. You will need a pro or a premium license. The data set size, which is the size of all the data in Power BI that you can have with a free license is one gigabyte with pro and the premium license is this pro is one gigabyte and premium is 10 gigabytes. Storage wise, you can have maximum 10 gigabytes per user for free license for pro license. Also, it's 10 gigabyte per user. And for premium license, you have 100 terabytes. So that's where the enterprise scale uh, comes in for Power BI. For pre and pro, the environment is shared. For premium, it's dedicated environment. Maximum auto refresh in a 24 hour period, you can refresh your Power BI data set eight times in that period with a free and pro license, but with a premium license, you can have it refresh uh, 48 times in the 24 hour period. With the premium license, you can also do AI based data modeling and use the AI data lake storage. So that's all about licensing. And that completes our session about topic on about Power BI. I'll start on connecting to data. So for connecting to data, we'll be using the Power BI desktop demo. I'll go to Power BI desktop and we'll go from there for the demo now. So how do you get Power BI desktop? You can get it two ways. You can connect to the powerbi.coms online. So if I go to powerbi.com and you can create a free account. You can try it free for 30 or 60 days or you and you can download the desktop from here. So you can go into products, Power BI desktop and you can download it free. If you have Windows 10, then you can go to the Microsoft Store and get the desktop Power BI desktop app from there. And that is my preferred way of getting it because Microsoft updates uh, Power BI desktop month on a month to month basis or a monthly basis. And it's better to get it from the as an app from Microsoft Store instead of uh, trying to get it and then downloading it every month. You can download the Power BI desktop app right from the Microsoft Store if you have Windows 10 and then it it gets updated every every time if there's a new fresh update for it. So that's how you get your desktop. Now I have the desktop with me. Let me open my Power BI desktop. So here's the Power BI desktop. Uh, first thing you want to do is get yourself accustomed to the desktop, different tabs in here uh, to start Connecting to data, you will click on this Get Data tab. You can also connect to Excel. You can connect to Power BI data sets, or you can manually enter data into it. Every time you make a connection, Power BI will store all your connections. You can connect to the data sets or your online connections using Power BI desktop recent sources. You will also transform your data using this Transform Data button, or you can refresh the data right from here. So now when you click on get data, these are the options available, the common data sources. So you have Excel and all the ones that we mentioned. If you click more, you will see all the connectors that are possible using Power BI desktop. So online services, you can connect to SharePoint, Dynamics 365, which we'll be using for this demo. Business Central, Azure DevOps, Salesforce, Google Analytics, and many more. Uh, there's a huge list and this list keeps on increasing. Uh, plus you can create your own connector if you want to. Uh, for the Power Platform, they have this uh, Power BI data flows, common data service, Power Platform data flows. So 
I will also be using common data service for this demo to connect to uh, Dynamics 365 database. If you have any other database, you can connect to different types of database, MySQL, Access, SQL Server, SAP, and all different types of database from here. So now if I want to, I can connect to my online services and I can get data from Dynamics 365 online. And once I go here, it will ask me, what is my web API URL? So web API URL, you will get it from Dynamics 365 customization and developer resources, and you will enter the URL right here. And let me quickly show that to those who are working with Dynamics 365. So if you go to customizations and developer resources, and this is the instance web API URL. This is what you need to enter in the Power BI desktop when you're using this connection. So this is what you will enter here. So I already have entered it and I have my recent sources. So this is the web API URL which I entered. And once I select it, It will connect to my Dynamics 365 online database instance. And I will be able to see all the different types of entities which are available. So it's, it's just uh, connecting right now. So these are the different entities which are in my Dynamics 365 instance. Let's say I want to connect to the account entity. I can put in the search account, click on the account entity. Uh, one important thing to remember is do not start loading the entity because then it will add all the fields. And sometimes your entity may have a lot of custom fields. So what you want to do is transform the data. That's what you need to do. So I'm going to transform the data. So when you click on transform data, it opens the Power Query Editor. And you will see these are the different entities that I have already downloaded. This is the accounts too, because I have multiple accounts entity. I did it once earlier. And you will see all the columns from your entity which are now in your desktop. It's a preview of the top uh, 97 rows and 309 columns. I can click on choose columns. This is what you want to do is to in Power BI, you want to only bring in the data that you want for creating your reports and visualizations. So you don't want to bring all the columns. You want to selectively choose which columns you want to bring. So you can uncheck all the columns and select, let's say I want my account ID. I want my account number. So let me put a number here. So I get the account number, industry code, and I can go down this list and pick and choose what are the fields or columns that I want to bring in. So this way you want to limit and bring in only the data that you want and don't worry about it. You can go back and redo this and have add or remove columns as you need. Every step that you do using Power BI gets recorded. So if I'm doing this step, it will say what are my steps which I have applied here. So source and navigation. Since I already have done uh, bringing the data in, I'm not going to do anything more. I'm just going to show you what is the data I've brought in and we can go from there. So, so in my desktop, I have three uh, buttons here. The report button, which is this one that you see right now. The data button, which shows you 
different entities. Let me get rid of this. Okay. So these are the different entities that I've pulled from my Power BI instance. So this is the accounts. It has the account ID, state of province, account number, name. And these are my incidents. So incidents are cases in Dynamics 365. And I have this columns created on ticket number, case, origin code, title, customer account, ID, incident ID. Because I want to link my incident column and the accounts column, I also got in the customer account ID so I can match which case or incidents are linked to which accounts. And certain, you will notice that the case origin code has only numbers in it. It doesn't tell you the display name. And that's why I use the CDS connector with my Power BI desktop to connect to get the display name for the case origin code. So using the, using the get data, you can connect to the Power Platform and use the Power Platform connector or CDS connector to connect to the same instance of Dynamics 365. I go to the common data service connector. And then I have to put in my server URL. And I already have this connection, so I can go back to my recent sources where I've entered the server URL and my username and password. And it brings uh, the data same way as it was in the earlier. I can see all the entities from my Dynamics 365 instance. And the difference is I can see the display name also. So let's say display. Incident. Let me go to the incident entity first. And let's transform the data here. and choose by columns that I want. And you will see there are so many display names available. So I have the case origin code and the case origin code display, case type code, case type code display. So this is one, one way of getting the display names that you want for all the option sets which are available in Dynamics 365. I don't need uh, this at all, so we can maybe close this one. Okay, so once you have your data in place, you can then start modeling it. You can transform the data right here. And you can also create linkages between the tables. So Power BI will automatically find the linkages and if they find the same uh, data in two columns, it will make the links for you. So for example, I have the account, opportunity and incidents or cases and see the linkages are already made by Power BI because it, it automatically finds the relationship and models the data for you. Now, if you don't like it, you want to change it, you are welcome to change it. You can create your own uh, modeling here and you can also uh, make new uh, connections between different entities and data here. I can also get data from other sources 
uh, other than Dynamics 365. So if I have a separate data set or a data stored on an on-premise in a separate SQL Server database, I can bring the data from here and then link it to my accounts entity or opportunity or case entity and make the relationship. So this is where you would do all the modeling of the of your data. If there are any questions, let me quickly make sure that there are no questions. Uh, I see some. You can unmute and ask me questions also. I am okay with that. Sorry, I don't see any questions. So I can manage the relationship from here. Also in here, you can go in and you know change the name of your columns. You can massage the data. You can choose, for example, I want this to be account name because you don't want the name to show up multiple times. So I can re rename this to say account name. Okay. So once you once you have the data in a format that you are happy with, you have all the data that you want. You can also create uh, calculations. You can create new measures. You can create add new columns to this data, and create your own calculations to add your own calculations to the data. So Power BI is a very powerful tool where the desk in the desktop is allows you to do all these calculations, measures, uh, create a calculated column, uh, make a, add your own DAX uh, data analysis expressions, which is a formula which you are more used to using Excel. If you have done formulas in Excel, you are the same kind of uh, logic to create formulas in Power BI. You can transform your data and you can uh, make your relationship. Once you have your relationship all in place, the next thing you want to do is create your charts and reports. This is where you want to ask the question, what is the insight that my business users are looking for and how is the best way to present it? This is, uh, so the earlier part was uh, more of a science uh, where you need to uh, do some mechanical work, but this is more of an art uh, where you have to uh, you know, understand from a business user's point of view what is the exact thing they are looking for and which is an actionable insight that you can provide uh, using Power BI visuals. So uh, let me just start with some basics and get a dash, get a visual ready for us. So I have, I see here I have my industry code and my account ID. So let's say I want to see what are my accounts by industry. I can choose, uh, let me choose this uh, stack bar chart. And then in the fields, I can choose account ID and choose the field industry code display. So this is a display field. It says display here, right? So there you go. Let's see what we have here. Okay, so nothing is showing. All right, let me take the, so this is your visualizations. You can see your data in here, the axis. I'll pull the industry code display, put in the value column. Okay, that didn't make much sense. Okay, here we go. Try, you want a summary, so the value is summarization of accounts by industry. And there you go, there it is. I put this in the legend. Okay. That's what we need. So this makes sense. Summary of account by industry. And let me explain. Get this focus on this particular chart. So I see this is count of account ID by industry code. But I don't want this blank column because that's taking up, that's the highest number. So the data has too many blanks in it. So I can filter the data out here. So I can go to 
let me say I, I want to filter this. There's a basic filtering. You can do an advanced filtering or top 10, top 20 filtering. So I'm going to do basic filtering. Select all and remove the blanks. So I can uncheck this. There it is. So now I have my uh, data which the way I want for accounts by industry. But I see that I need to clean it up a little. It's not, it's not a good uh, form. It's not a good view. I cannot really see. I want to try different visualizations. So I will choose. Let me choose a pie chart. OK, that looks better. I, I think the pie chart looks better than the stack bar chart. And now let's try to clean up this. OK, I don't understand all these numbers. We can go into this paintbrush, which is formatting and start formatting your chart. So this is all easy and you know the way I'm doing it, I want to explain everything. I'm going to go step by step. So I already did the filter. I'm not interested in filtering anymore, so I'll close my filter. Okay, so the legend is on, on. it's the right center. Okay, title is on. The title says industry code. The legend title says industry code display. So I want to just say industry. Let's change that. And I'm OK with the text size. Uh, I can also change the data data colors. Uh, and I would not uh, worry about data colors for now. The detail label. So this detail label 10, all this. Uh, not sure if that's the right way to present it to my audience. So let's try this. OK, that makes more sense to me. So this gives you financial is 38.46%, wholesale is 3.85%, entertainment is 15.38%, and then there are more breakages here. So this way you can choose, pick and choose the way you want it. Uh, I also want to change the title. It says this count of account ID by industry code display. Okay, that's a very big title. So you can say, I'm going to erase this whole title here and put in here accounts by industry. Okay. All right, I think this looks okay to me. Uh, I can make an alignment of the title. I can center it. I'll leave it in the left side. And I go back to my report. OK. So I think I'm OK with this chart. I'm going to close this and let's try to create some more. So as you play around with this, the more you play, you will be able to uh, create your visuals, uh, add more charts, and have a lot of fun with Power BI. So let's try to work on some opportunities data. So let's say I want to do account by opportunity. So let's normally I start by okay. So this one was no, you want to start, you want to click outside this box. So it, this is not highlighted. I click somewhere outside. So now create a second visual. And now I want to know what are my accounts by and what are my opportunities. So this time I want my account name. So we have the account name. And I want the opportunities. Number of opportunities I want to say. So let's go down this. Opportunity code. What I need is the opportunity ID. Oh, that's the opportunity ID right there. So I want a count of my opportunity ID. 
So whatever you want to count, you put it in the value field as we learned earlier. And let's try to focus on this one and see how it looks. Let's make this bigger. Get this focus. OK. Uh, all right, that's too, too many. I want to let's say I want to filter this now to see my top 10 opportunities. So let's filter this. OK, let's not go here. And let's say top 10. And I'll add the opportunity ID, count of opportunity IDs. OK, so this is my top 10. If I want, I can make it top five. And then apply the filter. All right, that looks good. And then we can now uh, change the legend uh, naming and all of that. As I talked about this earlier, I can go to here. And this is all uh, Power BI allows you to Change the title text. Number of opportunity by account. Is by account. OK. That's the title. Let me go back to my X axis. I want to change the title to account name. And where is my Y axis right here? Okay. Okay. Title is opportunities. OK, so that looks good. But if I want to add some more information to it. How to make it more meaningful. The idea is to give as much insight as you can in the best possible way. So let's put some data labeling here. So this gives you a number of opportunities without having to look at the graph. And it tells you 11 opportunities for adventure works, nine here, then all of that. Okay, so I think I'm good with this report. So I'll go back to my view, change it a little bit. So Power BI will allow you to position your reports and graphs in a way that is easily easy to understand and easy to uh, draw, visualize. All right, so you are good with this. You can now save this. So I created this uh, Power BI desktop file account opportunity case. Apply later. I don't want any changes to be applied. Okay, I don't know what the changes are, but okay, it's just evaluating certain data. Okay. Okay, it's getting all the data that I uh, I had downloaded, I had connected to, so it's accounts and incidents data again. OK, it's getting done. OK, that's done. OK, so you can add more visualizations. I will not go into it. Uh, I, have, I also want to finish my uh, discussions on Power BI desktop. 
So one thing you want to do is you want to now be able to you know, make sure that you have the opportunities account by industry and let's say cases by account. So you want to know number of cases by account. Or I can I can just uh, uh, go here. And let's publish this. I'm going to publish this for now. Save my work. So my workspace. Let me first make sure I'm logged in as the right user. Okay. Yep, so it will sign into my Power BI account, which I created earlier. It's a free account. Make sure you sign into your correct account and hit publish. So I have created a Empower 2020 workspace and I'll show you uh, how to create a workspace once we go to Power BI service and I'll publish it there. So it's publishing what I have created till now onto the Power BI service. Okay. I can go to my Power BI service from here. page I got it. Okay, so this is the Power BI service. Let me refresh this. So PowerBI.com. And that's my account opportunity case, which we just created in the Power BI desktop. So now it's online, it's in the power, it's published, and it is in the powerbi.com service. Let me quickly go back to my PowerPoint to make sure we covered what we're discussing. So we we I showed you how to connect to the uh, data, different types of data, and we use Dynamics 365 as our data. Uh, did a little bit of transforming and modeling of data with that. Uh, I showed you how to uh, do the relationship using Power BI Desktop and how to connect uh, multiple data sources or tables and entities together. Uh, then we created some visuals, so and that uh, visuals is where you want to generate the insights, so you get your correct uh, data in there and create the visuals. And then we did the publishing and sharing of it. So uh, more about this I will talk uh, right now. So we, we have completed, we are right now here, publish and sharing part. So let's go back to our desktop before we go to the powerbi.com. So when you are publishing and sh sharing, you want to make sure that you have the right data and you have the right roles, security roles. So all the security modeling and all of that happens within Dynamics 365, uh, within Power BI. Uh, and from Power BI desktop, it goes into the powerbi.com service. So here in modeling tab, you will see that is the manage roles button in the Power BI desktop. And I have created two roles. Uh, that is a sec now we are talking about security and how you can secure your data once you publish it to a powerbi.com service and then embed it into different applications. 
So I created a role for customer service and then I and because my customer service roles do not need to have access to opportunities, I put in a filter expression where it says that their access to opportunities is false. So both the opportunity tables access is fo false. And I also created another role called sales. And then sales, I made sure that they don't have access to the, to the case or the incident uh, table. So let's say I don't want them accessing this. I can click here, add filter, and say hide all rules. So that way they will not have access to uh, this three uh, data uh, tables of incidents, but they will have access to accounts and opportunities for sales. And I can create as many roles as I want, and all roles are created in Power BI Desktop. And once you publish it, the roles go into the PowerBI.com service. So I can save this. And if you want to test the roles, you can click on View As. And then I can say, OK, View As Customer Service. So if I click on Customer Service, I should not be seeing the, oppor the opportunities here. So I click OK. So it removes the opportunity data because I don't have access to, as a customer service role, I don't have access to opportunities, so it will not allow me to see it. And click on stop viewing, and then it brings the opportunity da data that we have here back up. Same way, if I had the, uh, if I had created the case visual, uh, a salesperson would not be able to see the incidents if they are not, if you don't want them to see it. So it is a very uh, role level security. It is very uh, defined. Uh, but one thing we have to understand is this is a Power BI security. It's not the security of your application like Dynamics 365. And Dynamics 365 security is different from Power BI.com security. So once you pop, once I publish this, uh, the security roles also gets published along with my data set. The whole thing that gets published is the data set online. So let's go into Power BI.com online and look at the Empower 2020 data set. So this is my data set. And I have different settings here. It's a PBIX file. I can, down, I can download it or someone else. I can give access to someone else to download it. I can have settings here. I can schedule a refresh. So I can have a data set connection. So if I sign in, And let me edit credentials here. Sign in. Just to be odd. So what I'm doing is a data set online. I'm connecting it to my instance. So now I can schedule a refresh. Because I have a, a free or it's a Power BI Pro with a trial version. 59 days are left on this. I can say keep my data up to date up to date and then schedule a refresh. Let me zoom in a little bit. Here. And I want it to be refreshed, let's say at four o'clock in the morning, and let's say four o'clock at the evening. Twice a day I want it to be refreshed, or let's say 10 p.m. in the evening. And there's any failure, I want it to be emailed to the data set owner. Right now, since I published the data set, I am the data set owner. And I can apply this. So now this is how you would refresh your data online. You don't need to download the data and upload it again. Uh, all this data will get auto refreshed from its connection to the application, which is Dynamics 365 in this case. If you have an on-premise uh, data set which is connecting to an on-premise server, you can have a uh, gateway connection and you can have the report, the Power BI gateway connect to your on-premise data and be able to refresh it also. But that requires a Power BI premium license. 
So that's how you will schedule your refreshes. And now let's work on creating. So this is the report that we created in using the Power BI desktop. You will see I can click on edit report. And I get the same capabilities which I had in my desktop, but now I have it online. So I can do all my visualizations, uh, create more visuals here if I want to and add it. And, and I can also assign this to some other user, share it with other users so they can also create the visuals from here. So let me go back. And let's say I want to create a dashboard. So I go back to this. I pin this, I give it a dashboard name. Call it Empower 2020 and I pin it to that dashboard. And then I want this to be pinned to my same dashboard. I can pin it to existing or a new dashboard and then pin this. So now when I go back to my dashboards, I will see that I have Empower 2020 dashboard. And this is the dashboard which I can then use and uh, to share it with other users in my organization or I can publish it to a website or I can even embed it into an app like Dynamics 365. So if I want to embed this in my Dynamics 365 app, so let's go to Dynamics 365. I have enabled uh, the use using of Power BI. So if I'll just quickly show you. Go to system settings. Reporting and I have enabled allow Power BI visualization embedding in Dynamics 365. So I can go into Dynamics 365, create a new dashboard. It's a Power BI dashboard and it, what it does is it it brings the, it connects to my Power BI account. Uh, using my Dynamics 365 account, and then it will show me all the dashboards that I have access to. So I have the Empower 2020, and I can save this dashboard. And I can also enable it for mobile right from here and save it. So this is how you will you will create a dashboard in Power BI and then bring it into Dynamics 365. And then you can use this Dynamics 365 security and share the dashboard within Dynamics 365 with a user or team. This is how you would make sure that, let's say I want to share it with Patrick, Sandy, uh, who else is there, Yante, and this other, my colleagues who I want to share the dashboard with, I can click add and share it. So then they also need a Power BI Pro license to visualize the dashboard, but they can see the dashboard within Dynamics 365 itself. So this is one way of uh, bringing in data, uh, transforming in it, creating your visualizations and creating a dashboard in Power BI, embedding it into a business application like Dynamics 365, and sharing it with your colleagues in the in your organization or even teams. You can share it with teams. Uh, one thing to note is if they have access to Power BI Pro licensing and if they click on this, they will also have access to the data set which is which was used to create this dashboards. Okay, before one of the things that I wanted to talk about was insights. So you have your reports. You can generate insights from here. One second. Analytics. 
reports. OK, this one, this has enough, enough data in it for me to generate insights. So what Power BI does is it looks at your data set. Uh, it needs enough amount of data for it to generate insights. So it will create this uh, analysis based on algorithms which are given by Microsoft and automatically give you insights on your data. And that insight you can use, and those insights are based on regression analysis or some algorithms uh, that are created. These are insights that you can, with a click of a button, get, get from your data set which you have in Power BI. And you can then visualize these insights and be able to get more information or allow your users in your organization to see, uh, you know, AI based, AI modeled insights from the data that you have in Power BI. And this is all with the click of a button. You don't have to do much work. Uh, you can obviously create your own AI modeling if you have the Power BI license, and you can then pin this insights into a into your dashboard so that you can you can click on pin and you can pin this to an existing dashboard here. So that's the inside part of uh, powerbi.com service. Let me quickly go back to my presentation. So we talked about publishing and sharing and also insights and AI. So let me focus a little bit on the AI part, which is all new. So there are a couple of things that Microsoft has done with the premium license. Uh, one is data flows. So Microsoft has introduced Power BI data flows. Uh, this is all uh, complex stuff. I'm not going to talk much in detail about it. Also, I don't have the Power BI premium license. Uh, there is no trial for a Power BI premium. But you can have multiple data sources, connect multiple data sources, and get data into Azure Data Lake. And it's in the stored in the common data model. And then from there, create your own transformation, uh, do the calculation and analysis, create a data set, uh, reports and dashboard. So that's the new feature that Microsoft has provided with Power BI, uh, which is very exciting and very new. Uh, really, I think everybody should uh, get into Power BI and start uh, looking into this. There's also machine learning. Power BI has a ability to generate uh, insights from using Azure machine learning. What it does is because all your data is in Power BI, you can actually train the create a model so select the data that you want to train choose a model type and then train your model so create and train your model so this is all machine learning uh, using azure machine learning and power bi uh, data in power bi so as the data is coming in your your model gets trained and then you can iterate and retrain the model and apply the model to generate insights and those insights that are generated can be then published to a dashboard and shared with the organization users. Uh, so this is really exciting. I think this will uh, open and enable AI uh, for every user in your organization, not just uh, the AI scientists, but uh, power users be able to uh, use machine learning using Power BI. Uh, that's why I said earlier that uh, Power BI is going to be the UI for AI, and this is what I meant with it. There's also the Power BI Cognitive Services, uh, Azure Cognitive Services. This is also with a premium license. And you can do with the data in Power BI, with the premium license, you can connect to Azure Cognitive Services and do multiple analysis on your data, sentiment analysis, key phrase extraction, language detection, and image tagging. So those are, those are the new, new things that's coming in Power BI, and I think I'm very excited about it. I think everyone should uh, get their feet wet, start using Power BI, and be able to uh, get into machine learning, cognitive AI uh, tools also. Okay, this is some of the documentation. Uh, it's on it's on Microsoft website, and I'll I'll open the if there are any questions, we can talk about uh, and let me know if you have any questions. You can open your mic and you can ask me questions now. Five minutes left for my demo to get over now. I hope everybody uh, is able to get a basic understanding of Power BI, and is uh, is you know you can start practicing. You can start loading data and connecting to whichever application you are able to connect to, 
and get insights from there. So let's see. Okay. Uh, Prasfula is asking what we do on Power BI. Is it same as process mining? Well, you are you are basically bringing in the data and transforming it, modeling it, and then uh, showing it to your user community so they can get insights. So, uh, Mehdi, uh, thank you, Mehdi. Uh, the coding language is uh, DAX, so you would use DAX to code in Power BI. So if you know uh, data analysis expression, then you'll get a lot of this in the online version. Okay, so if there's no more questions, uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone. There is a survey that you have to fill out, uh, and and you can you'd probably get the video of uh, of this uh, presentation from uh, 365 Saturday and power your career. Uh, I want to wish everyone all the best and thank you very much and be safe.